Hey guys, we're on to experiment 7 and uh, this one actually took quite a while. Uh, I decided to reposition the camera because we're starting to get into... well actually let me back up a sec. <laughs> so this experiment, experiment 7, is not actually supposed to be on a breadboard. However, um, I started to attempt to uh, do this experiment without one and it was an absolute nightmare trying to get the uh, alligator clips to clip on to the little legs of our relay while also holding a leg of an LED and a wire um, all in one little alligator clip. That was just a nightmare. So um, I decided to kind of jump the gun uh, one chapter or one experiment early and bring out the breadboard. Um, you'll notice I have my uh, power supply here. Um, and I used, as the book instructed, a 12-volt um, uh, AC adapter. In fact, let me pull that out real quick. And I'll just show it under the camera. So basically this guy is the adapter. And as you see, it has options of 12 all the way down to 1.5 uh, volts. Um, and this, obviously, the goal is to convert alternating current from your house to direct current uh, to supply power to you know most common electronic devices and uh, this particular adapter has a switch here at first um, it was defaulted up here at first I thought that uh, this was like an on off switch at the adapter turns out this is a polarity switch so you can um, basically designate which of your leads will have the positive versus the negative um, side of the current flow for the direct current. So it's pretty cool. So this guy is set to 12 and the polarity is set so that my labels right here uh, correspond. And I figured these out by simply plugging this guy in and setting my uh, multimeter to direct current voltage and applying the probes to both ends to see which one turned out to be negative and which one turned out to be positive. When the reading was positive, I knew that the red lead of my multimeter was pointing out the positive lead of the uh, wires. So that's pretty much all there was to the adapter. So let me plug that guy back in. Because we will be using him for the experiment. And I had this on a power strip that I have cleared off uh, all other devices so that I can toggle on and off the um, power strip entirely. So that will be very helpful for projects moving forward. So um, in terms of tools uh, used, th this, pr this uh, setup on the board, while it looks pretty small, for my first proto board work in you know over a decade, this, uh, this took me like probably half an hour um, and that's in part due to the fact that you know I was having a little bit of a tough time kind of um, transposing the uh, the actual diagram here because the relay is upside down um, to the actual board here and I wanted to do that in such a fashion that um, this was very logical to kind of walk through um, but in terms of tools that I used, uh, pretty much just use any kind of wire stripper you have. I happen to have one of these cool old school um, automatic wire strippers, pretty cool. Um, some shear cutters. Uh, these guys are great for um, shortening legs and things like that or, or just cutting the wires to the right length. And um, these are excellent, just a pair of um, either needle nose or kind of, I don't know what you'd call these ones, kind of <laughs> not quite needle nose but a little shorter stubbed. Um, these are great for like if you have a wire in your hands, you kind of like curl over the wire so that it's a little uh, more precise for putting bends so that you can pop these in. And also you can grab the end and push down with the tool. I find that a lot more consistent to get these into the proto board. Um, so anyways, in terms of uh, what's going on in this circuit, uh, let me just grab this. Alright, um, so what is happening here is, is we've got the, uh, the positive uh, you know, flow uh, 
first of all, I guess the bus lines, I should say, are all set up with the power on the left and the ground on the right for each of these. So that's how I'm tapping into those. Um, so the current will flow through here, and here we have a momentary switch. So when this guy is pushed down, this current um, will be connected. And when he's not pressed down, the current will not be connected. So it's pretty, uh, just to kind of like also highlight the, the more accurate schematic here. So if we were to look at this, you've got the relay here and the switch here. Okay? And we got our two LEDs and our resistor. So um, what's going on here is, is when we push this button and the current flows through the switch and goes to the input pin of our relay. By the way, um, I happen to be curious if I could find the data sheet for this guy, and this one was a little bit difficult. Um, I'm not sure if we are zoomed in enough here, but actually I'm curious, let's see, how much can we zoom in? Yeah, it's probably gonna be a little tough to read. I'll zoom that back out. Okay, so um, what we're basically doing here is, uh, we're gonna just ignore the fact that <laughs> I had a hard time finding the data sheet for this. Um, but the input pin is indeed here, just like the uh, book showed, except the book showed the relay upside down. And um, what happens is, is when this uh, current is connected, there is a coil that joins um, you know, these two pins, like the pin here and the pin here. And the current flows through the coil. And that, oh, sorry about that, my dog's shaking. Um, uh, the current flows through the coil and the uh, magnetic field around the coil um, essentially pushes a gate um, that will toggle between these lights. And this is another power supply um, for, um, so, so, so if I were to walk down this, let's, let's just try this one more time. So I, I go like this, and that, um, ending right here, I would view that as kind of like one isolated piece of this puzzle. Because when I don't press this button, what's going on is really the current goes in here and out this light through the resistor and to the ground. So if I don't press a button, this light will light up because of this default circuit. It goes through here, out this light, through the resistor, and back. Okay? If I do press the button, the magnetic field around the coil changes the latch inside this relay so that now this power line, which connects to this pin here, and the pin just below it, which connects to this LED, are no longer connected. And instead, this power line pin and the pin above it connected to this line or this LED are will now be connected, which will basically toggle us between these LEDs. So when I haven't pressed anything, this guy lights up. And when I have pressed one, this guy lights up. And that's the basic idea. So I will turn the power on and we will give it a shot. And I'm not sure. I will do this when we're record or when we are uh, doing toggles. That way, it's easier to see the lights. But um, so that's the idea. We have uh, this light on by default, as we just uh, thought we would. And if I were to press this, that lights on. And notice, um, you probably can hear on the camera the click. And that click is the actual latch being either repelled from the wire wrap, um, the magnetic field. It pushes a latch away like this. Push. And if I let it go, 
The magnetic field turns off because the current's no longer flowing through the coil. So the latch falls back to its default state. Sounds to me, based on what I'm hearing in there, if I were to, like, if I were to take a guess, I, I did not, by the way, I did not do what the book recommended, which was like take a razor blade and try to hack one of these in parts. I just couldn't bring myself to ruin a, a good part. But um, I did get a very accurate idea from uh, some Google uh, image searching, as well as what was in the book. So uh, I think there's probably a little spring in there too, because if you hear that, like not on the push where it, it shifts the latch and I push down, that's probably caused by the magnetic field alone. But when I let go, it springs back really quickly. And since there's not a coil on the opposing side, like forcing it back real quick, I'm guessing there's a spring in there that helps pull it back into place. But um, anyways, that is the default state uh, for this circuit. So we know from past experience that these LEDs should be taking roughly two volts, maybe two to three, just depends, somewhere in that range uh, about where they will uh, uh, except the uh, voltage and the rest will be passed on to the rest of the rest of the circuit. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. It takes two to three volts to basically push the current through the LED, hence the voltage drop, and the rest just gets left uh, to push through the rest. So, um, given that fact, and given the fact that our power supply is uh, roughly a 12 volt uh, direct current supply, much much higher than uh, anything we've dealt with with batteries. We should have roughly uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 9 to 10 volts that uh, are flowing through the rest of this circuit. So like we could do a voltage check on both sides of this resistor and that should be fine because that should show us, hey, this is where the rest of the uh, rest of the voltage is getting dropped. So let's try it out. And since we know that uh, current's coming from this side, well, I'm speaking conventionally, not, not uh, uh, electron flow wise, but so conventionally speaking, current is flowing over from, from here to here. So if we touch here, nine point eight six volts, nine point eight five, nine point eight six, pretty spot on. So likewise, if we were to measure the LEDs, it should be the other, uh, you know, other missing variable there to equate to around twelve volts. which is about right, 2.2 volts, cool, right in the sweet spot. And so likewise, if we push our switch, I can't push the switch and measure, unfortunately, but basically this LED should now have zero voltage flowing through it, or not flowing through it, but zero voltage being applied to it, and the 2.2 should be now applied towards that one. And I think that wraps this one up. So thankfully, since I've done the labor ahead of time, um, setting this experiment up for the uh, breadboard, I think the next experiment, uh, experiment eight, will uh, deviate from this just a little bit and it should be a lot quicker for me to set up. So I'll see you then.